when uh, Roberto von Braun found out that I was interested in emigrating, uh, you know, he immediately got me, he sent me a telegram. Um, I had written him that I wanted to immigrate and that I had lots of offers from, from uh, American industry. Conveyor in San Diego and Boeing and so on, they were doing what uh, Europeans called brain drain because they, the American universities didn't put out that type of uh, systems type oriented engineering, uh, broad based. And so I wrote him, hey, I like to immigrate, but I better go to industry first to learn the ropes because I'm a greenhorn. Yeah, this was straight out of Aachen? Uh, yes, yeah, straight out of Aachen. Yes. And, and so I get this telegram from, from von Braun, which says, don't go to industry, come to Huntsville, we are going to the moon, Werner von Braun. And this was, you know, just crazy. I heard Archangel Gabriel blow his horn up there, took two suitcases and came over and uh, no immigration problems. Uh, I was under a DX rating, uh, that was Kennedy's way of establishing priority for Apollo. So you didn't, didn't have to wait for quota type things and uh, had to go through CIC investigations, counterintelligence core, uh, lie detector, polygraph and all of that. But apparently I came through and, uh, and so I arrived here in Huntsville in August 62. Next year in August it's 50 years. So you became a member of uh, Werner von Braun's rocket team? Uh, right away. Uh, but, but really it's a uh, second wave because um, the original members came over with him in 47, 46, 47, uh, 120 of them and uh, uh, under the auspices of the army. So they wound up in, at Fort Bliss, Texas, White Sands, New Mexico, where they were firing some leftover V2s. And, uh, developed for the army <coughs> a missile capability. Uh, it was really um, medium range type missiles. The army wasn't supposed to do uh, intercontinental ones, it was Air Force. Uh, but von Braun kind of said, hey, uh, why not uh, use a uh, medium range and put another stage on top and you have a satellite rocket. You're always pushing for space flight. He served the military in Germany. He to later got accused for that, but there no, was, was no other way for an engineer to work in that area. And so he worked sometimes for strange masters, which is not his fault. He was, when he was director in Peenemünde, uh, he was 28 years old. And uh, any young engineer would have taken that, no matter, no matter who they worked for. And there was no way you could say no back in Germany, they would have shot you. Uh, at one time he spoke out and said, I really want to fly to space. So the Gestapo put him into jail and uh, his uh, superiors had to get him out before they killed him uh, by going all the way up to the top to uh, spare the uh, armament minister and said, you can't kill this man, we need him. So that uh, he came back. But today there are lots of people who are writing uh, history type books uh, which uh, paint uh, von Braun in a strange light sometimes, you know, like he was the devil's advocate and so on, uh, which is really not true. Uh, he, he had this child in him all the way to the end, uh, which made him believe in, in space light, uh, really innocent in a lot of ways. And uh, as innocent people sometimes do, they stumble into strange situations, um, like with the Nazis, uh, without really uh, realizing what was going on. And when he came over here, all of a sudden he could breathe freely. America was always good to him, and uh, so he took over with enthusiasm. And then when uh, Kennedy uh, was dismayed by Sputnik, which was really still Eisenhower, the Eisenhower time in 57, uh, the army put up the Explorer one on a von Braun rocket, on a redstone, in 58, January 58, which was also still Eisenhower time and no NASA around. And then um, the, the, the Congress and the President, uh, Eisenhower still, decided we need a civilian agency. I, I can't leave space uh, with military. Um, it looked bad the world over. And secondly, of course, Eisenhower having been a general uh, who, who actually won the Second World War, uh, didn't really like too much the, the tie-ins between military and industry. 
You know, he, he said if, if space flight is going to be remain with the military, it'll be big industry, and uh, and the government will have little to say. All lot of lobby is all over the place, uh, which was one of the reasons. And so he set up the civilian NASA in 1958, shortly after Explorer and after Alan Shepard. Alan Shepard flew then in '61, and Gagarin was the second big shock. Uh, Yuri Gagarin in uh, April 1961, uh, which uh, upset, of course, the, uh, Eisenhower's successor, um, who was John F. Kennedy. And uh, Kennedy knew he had got to do something, and Alan Shepard's flight, which was a suborbital 15 minute ride, uh, gave Kennedy kind of assurance that the rocket guys know what they were doing. So he gave the order. Uh, he told his vice president Johnson and others to come up with a plan how to beat the Russians peacefully. And so uh, they asked von Braun, uh, it came down from James Webb, who was NASA administrator, and von Braun wrote a famous memo, which is fully available on the internet, 10 points. Uh, we could do this, we could do that, we could do that, we could do that. And it was, you know, like building a satellite. Oh no, the Russians have it already flying to the moon. No, by the time we do that, they already are able to do that. We have to leapfrog them. We have to land on the moon. Uh, I'm pretty sure, von Braun said, they can't uh, uh, beat us in that area. And then, uh, of course, JFK and Werner and, and JFK were really good friends. Uh, young men, enthusiastic, um, with a vision. Uh, today, when I see the picture, how they walked through Huntsville, almost hand in hand, under the Saturns, taking a look, I could, I could cry, you know, it was an incredible time. These two young men with hopes for the future, having the uh, total, the nation at, her, at, at their heart, the concern for the nation, uh, and having visions, very strong visions about it. And JFK asking Werner, Werner, do you think you can do it? Yes, Mr. President, sure we can do it. And then Werner often came home to us here in Huntsville, flying down from Washington and said, hey guys, I'm way out on a limp. <laughs> you have to bail me out. Don't let me hang there, twisting slowly in the wind. And that's how he motivated the engineering teams. And so uh, when I joined the team in August 62, uh, I knew I had found, found my future home. It, it was hard work, uh, but uh, <laughs> so much fun that I'm still with it today.